Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for coming together again. We thank you because you've been speaking to us since we began. And we thank you because you've ministered to us already that by your own grace, in your own keeping, we'll never turn around in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, we pray that you help us to stand by that decision. That Lord, there will be that confidence in you that trust in you, 
that decision and that commitment to your word that lord will never never turn away from you in jesus name oh lord we have warnings in the scripture that only those who endure till the end will be saved and we have that warning from scripture there are many people that came out of the land of Egypt, but they were not able to get to the land of Canaan because they didn't have that firm decision that they will never turn around. We pray that we will not perish in the wilderness. We pray, o Lord, that we will not stop the journey until we come over there to see you face to face in Jesus' name. In trial, in temptation, in trouble, Make us triumphant in Jesus' name. That Lord, when the deceivers will come, when those who want to turn us around, discourage us, turn us away from the narrow road that leads to the kingdom of God, when they come, we pray we will not give them attention in Jesus' name. Speak with us now. And we pray, Lord, like Samuel, that we will not allow your word to fall to the ground, but it will be a fruit. A hundredfold, sixtyfold, thirtyfold, in the hearts of all the hearers, in Jesus' name. Wake us up. Help us to stand firm. Help us to continue till the very end. That, Lord, in unity with our ministers who have given us the message in song. No, no, no. We'll never turn back. We'll stay with you. We'll be with you. And eventually when the call will come, we'll fly away. And we'll be with the Lord ever and ever in Jesus' name. Help us to be obedient children that will take the warnings of Scripture seriously be with us now in jesus name we pray a time is flying away from us and yet in the time we have we need to consider the word of the lord to his own church in matthew chapter 7 Matthew chapter 7, reading from verse 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are having in wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns, of figs, of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down cut down and cast into the fire wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them those are the very words of jesus christ not only that he is our savior he is the lover of our souls and in love he gave warning to everyone following after him that we should beware of false prophets. It is the order of the day. In many religious circles that they do not talk about warning against false prophets. They say that if you want anyone, if you want the members of your church against false prophets it means you are bringing division between your church and the body of christ they say if you sound any note of warning you are labeling identifying some people as false they say that if you give any note of warning at all 
and you say beware of false prophets that you are motivated by pride because you are saying that you are right and the others are wrong and yet as we go through the scriptures you will find that we have warnings in the bible telling us that there will be false prophets they have they have always been in the land of israel there, there were false prophets at the time of the lord jesus christ there were religious teachers preachers that were misleading the people not showing them the way of god in the time of the apostles there were false prophets as well and we have been told in scripture that till the very end of time there will be the appearance and the manifestation and the activities of the false prophets and so we have to take warning and we shouldn't be intimidated by the people that say we shouldn't want anybody at all we should all get together not minding what doctrines anyone is preaching here jesus christ said that we should be aware of false prophets who will come to you they're very active who will come to you they work very hard who will come to you they travel very fast who will come to you they appear to know all the local government and all the regions and all the states and they want to touch where you are they want to bring their error their falsehood their confusion into your mind and then they will come in sheep's clothing pretending that they are the right prophets of god pretending that they are standing by the truth only to lower the standard of the word of god and to mislead the people that really want to make heaven their home at last in second peter chapter 2 second peter chapter 2 from verse 1 but there were false prophets also among the people even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately privately shall bring in damnable heresies even denying the lord even denying the lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction here peter the apostle he was speaking to the people of god and he said you need to remember the past history so that you'll be able to know the future reality he said in the past the history is this there were false prophets among them he said in the future future reality as there shall be false teachers among you and then he said these teachers they will first of all start in a private way they go private before they come public they will privately privately bring in damnable heresies and most of the people will not even know it is heresy because you see there are false teachers that are very eloquent there are false teachers that sound convincing there are false teachers that are imposing in their personality there are false teachers that they do not only have the communication ability they also have some false gifts to back everything up that they'll bring in damnable heresies heresies that will damn your soul heresies that will not only confuse you but will destroy your christian life will destroy your consecration your commitment unto the word of the lord but then it says their own judgment will come swiftly speedily and then it says in verse 2 and many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of when you begin to listen to false teachers one of the effects in your life is that you begin to speak evil of the one that has been pastoring in your local church for years you begin to speak evil of the one that has been teaching you the way to be born again you are born again the one that god used to show you the way of sanctification you knew nothing about sanctification about holiness about purity about heaven about calvary about the cross 
about the beauty of the kingdom of God. You knew nothing of the promises of God until you came across a church like this. And line upon line, precept upon precept, in the morning and in the evening, in the retreats and in the seminars, in the Bible study and in the revival hour, in the Sunday worship and at special occasions, as the teachers of the word of God were laying it line upon line, precept upon precept. And you enjoyed it. You appreciated it. You even prayed for your pastors and your teachers. You said, oh God, what would I have done if I did not meet a church like this? But then, immediately a false teacher comes across your way. First of all, he makes you to begin to doubt what you learned before. Number two, he makes you to look down on the one that God has used to teach you and to develop you. Number three, he makes you not only to look down now, to begin to criticize the truth. You'll begin to say, eh, although they say that doctrine is there, but how about this? How about this? How about this? The false teachers will begin to make you to find fault. Not only that, you don't not only criticize, you begin to support evil. You begin to even let down all the things you told the Lord before. Everything you have gone to the Lord to say, Lord, I give myself to you. I will never touch this. I will never touch that. I will never go this way. Oh Lord, I surrender completely, entirely, absolutely into your hand. Those false teachers, when they come across your way, and you begin to give ears to them, what you find in your life is that the things you threw away before, you begin to look for them again. Galatians chapter 2 verse 18. Galatians chapter 2 verse 18. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. You see what the false teachers will do in your life is to make you a destroyer of your own self. It's to make you a transgressor by your own volition, by your own free will. It is not even that the devil now is the one that is uh, making you to fall deliberately yourself. When you have yielded to a false teacher, to a false prophet, you make yourself a transgressor. If I build again, the things, not one thing, the things which I myself destroyed. And here we are. You are witnesses as well as I am a witness. When you came to the Lord Jesus Christ, at the point you repented, how many things you destroyed. Here we are. We are witnesses ourselves. At the time you heard about that sanctification, at the time you heard about Christian dressing, at the time you heard about Christian marriage, at the time you heard about Christian comportment, at the time you heard about separation from the world, at the time you heard the pure, undiluted word of God. You remember how you wept, how you cried, how you prayed, how you laid everything upon the altar. And you said, even if it's me alone in my family, even if it's me alone in my community, even if it's me alone among all the religious people, I will stand. And you remember that chorus you sang? When you said, no, 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 I will never turn back. Do you remember how you sang? I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. No turning back. You said, the world behind me. The cross before me. No turning back. No turning back. Then you said, though all forsake me, still I will follow. No turning back. No turning back. Didn't you know? When you were singing those choruses, no turning back. And then you said, I love my Jesus. My Jesus loves me. Then you said, no circumstance. No circumstance will change my decision. That's what you sang. You destroyed many things. Don't you remember? Those clothes, 
that will not cover your nakedness. You say, that's of the devil. You burn them. Don't you remember? The boyfriend, the girlfriend, how you forsook every one of them. Don't you remember? Go and buy a cigarette. No, I'm sorry, I'm not a Christian. Go and buy um, this and that. No, I'm sorry, I'm not a Christian. Go and marry an unbeliever. No, I'm sorry, I'm not a Christian. You destroyed a lot of things. When false teachers come, False teachers will make you to begin to doubt all the decisions you took many years ago. And you will begin to say, is that necessary? Is that necessary? Do you want to tell me that uh, all who don't do that, that they will not get to heaven? Do you want to tell me that only these deeper life people are going to go to heaven? And they, make, they begin to make you doubt all the decisions that you are taking. And then, if you are not convinced, then they go, they come again. They are never tired. And when they come again, they say, Oh, I see that uh, you have only one dress on. When I came the other time, you had, uh, you know, this dress on. Uh, maybe you don't have money to buy anything. Uh, well, although you are not in my new church already, but uh, here is uh, 200 naira. And you say, ah, deeper life, they only give me Bible. Only doctrine. Only teaching. Only evangelism. Only fire. No food. Fire without food. Doctrine without love. All they give me is doctrine. But look at this man. Even if he is wrong, I think I will join him. Because after all, he may have false doctrine, but he gives me money. And then the next time he comes, he says, uh, how are you now? Well, you say, uh, I will be coming little by little. You have started going. And you know what the Bible says? If I build again. And those, all those people, the people that are coming to you, they themselves, they are building again the things that is destroyed. They may tell you they are still saved. They may tell you they are still sanctified. They may tell you they are still servants of God. They may tell you their names are in the book of life. They may tell you any kind of story and any kind of testimony. They may tell you that they are still in touch with God. But if the word of God is true, if what we have read in Galatians chapter 2 verse 18 is true, if I build again, if I build again the bridge between you and the world that you destroyed many years ago, the build, the bridge between you and the idol worshippers you destroyed many years ago. The music of the world that these same people that they preach and they said in our church, that's how they said it at that time, they said never, never, never. In fact, if you listen to them very well, some of those preachers, they said, if you ever see me, that I have worldly music in the church where I pastor. They said, you know that I am backsliding. But now, right now, those who said that before, preaching forcefully at the retreat, preaching forcefully in the places where they gathered us together, if you find out now, those things they destroyed by their preaching, by their consecration, by their prayer, by their counseling. Those things they destroyed by their letter writing. And they said nothing of the world, nothing of the devil will destroy everything. They are building it up again. And the Bible says, no matter what revelation you say you have, no matter new anointing you say you have, no matter what it is you are claiming to have now, no matter what new thing you say you have seen, if I build again those things that I destroyed, I make myself, I join the devil to do another work, to make myself a transgressor, I pray it will never happen to you. If it is not going to happen to you, you'll need to take the warning of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus Christ gave us the warning. Why did he give us the warning? Because he knew that there is danger. If there were no danger, he would not have given us the warning. The danger is a real, sure, certain danger. You see, there are some people that may say, danger, danger, and there is, they have seen nothing. And the danger is not real, it's imaginary. But the danger Jesus spoke about, 
the danger of false prophets is real, is certain, is sure. Not only that, it is a present danger. You know, there were some things that were dangerous in the past. But then those things have been cleared off and the danger is no more there. The danger we're talking about of false prophet is a present danger. Not only that, number three, it is a universal danger. It's the same danger of false prophets we see in Nigeria, we see in Ghana. It's the same danger of false prophets we see in Ghana, we see in Togo. It's the same danger we see in Togo that we see in all of Africa. It's the same danger of uh, false prophets, false teachers we see in Africa, we see in America. Everywhere it is, it is a universal danger. Number four, it's a very subtle danger. The devil doesn't come and he says, I am devil, I want to destroy you, let me come in. Oh no, he doesn't say that way. False prophets don't say, I am a false prophet, I'm inviting you to my church. Oh no, they don't say that way. It's very subtle. Cleverly arranged. Number five, it's a terrifying danger. Because, you know, the result of a false prophet coming into your life, coming into your family, coming into that house fellowship, taking that zone over and saying, after all, you zona leader, would you say you don't know me? Would you tell me, are you saying that now I am a sinner? T let me know why I am talking to you to come to my place and to, to destroy everything we built before and you are not listening to me. Tell me blank, outright. Are you saying that I am now a sinner? And these people are bold. And they look, you, look at you straight in the face. And you have difficulty to say that this person, at least to his face, is a sinner. Uh, then you say, I really don't know. Well, if you don't, if you say I'm not a sinner, and I'm telling you, come over here. And they just say, you know, with a command like that, then you begin to tremble. What am I going to do? It's a terrifying danger. Because if you yield... And you go into evil. You know what's going to happen? Your soul is going to be destroyed. Because you also, you also, wants to go into false teaching and false doctrine. You are going to be building up again the things that you destroyed. But even though it's a certain danger, number one. Present danger, number two. Universal danger, number three. Subtle danger, number four. Terrifying danger, number five. Number six, it is avoidable danger. You can avoid it. And that's why God gives us warning. Because if you could not avoid it, why would he give us warning? If you knew that the devil will come, there's nothing you can do about it, you are gone and you'll go with the devil, why would he give, give us the warning? If you knew that the false prophets will come, and you will not be able to stand, you will not be able to resist it, you will not be able to say, here I stand with the truth of the word of God. Why will he give us the warning? It is avoidable danger. And I pray that every one of us will avoid and escape the danger of false prophets grabbing you, taking you away from the shepherd, the bishop of your soul, and dumping you into hellfire. You will avoid it. You will escape it. That every little sheep here, God can keep you. That you will not be lost. If you say, but I am weak, but your Savior is strong. But I'm not intelligent, but your Savior is intelligent. But they easily confuse me, but they cannot confuse the Savior living within you. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and he opens the door, I will come in. If you are born again, if you are a child of God, Jesus is living inside you and is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And all those people that come, they look like lion, they are not lion. They look like lion, but uh, they are only pretending to be. They look like, but the real lion, the one that is able to break the bones and break all those things in pieces, it, live, it lives inside your heart. And because you overcame, you will overcome. 
And so if we will take heed to the warning, if we will say, yes, Lord, I have heard your voice, and I am going to stand, I believe by the grace of God, you will stand in Jesus' name. You know, I thank the Lord. I came to the Lord Jesus Christ in 1964, April, April 5. And April this year is gone already. That means 29 years have gone already. And since I came to the Lord, it was from the very first week that I came to know the Lord. I knew about restitution. And thank God, I still believe that today. 29 years, I never said one day, one week, one month, one year, out of those 29 years that I am confused about restitution. It was since that time I knew about sanctification. It was since that time I have been against worldly music in the assembly, in the church of the living God. And by the grace of God for the 29 years and over now, I am still against that thing. And if I can stand for 29 years, I can stand for 30 years. And I can stand for 40 years. And I can stand for 50 years. If God can help me, he can help you. I'm like you are. You are like I am. My strength is only in the Lord. I'm not strong by myself. I'm not wise by myself. People try to confuse me too. Americans speak to me. British people speak to me. Nigerians speak to me. Africans speak to me. And they say, why don't you change this thing? It's not that I'm wise. Then I go to the Lord Jesus Christ. I said, Jesus, what you taught me many years ago, that I've preached and I've declared to thousands of people, I've written about it in track. Somebody, a theologian, is coming to me to confuse me. Then he says, my child, don't mind them. There are many of them in the world like that. And then I tell those people, I said, Jesus said, I shouldn't mind you. That the word of God is correct. That heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word of God shall never pass away. That when all the stars of heaven, when the moon and the sun, when they are passed away, that when the sky has been rolled up, that every jot, every tittle, every comma, every semicolon, every cross of a T, every dot of an I, in the word of a living God, will never pass away. And because of that, by the grace of God, I am still standing. And I pray you will stand. Wouldn't it be wonderful if all of us that are here we will take a united stand against false preachers, against false teachers, and we will say, by the grace of God, I have known the truth. Don't you know the truth? Don't you know the truth? You will say, by the grace of God, I know the truth. I will never turn away. I will never leave this narrow path that leads unto life eternal. I pray that we we'll remain in Jesus' name. Well, let me talk to you. Point number one. Christians stand for sound doctrine. Christians stand for sound doctrine. You see, if we're going to be real Christians, real children of God, you will need to take your stand. You will need to take your stand and stand for sound doctrine. Not for modified doctrine, changing doctrine, diluted doctrine, not doctrine that somebody has taken a little away and added another thing. Not a colored doctrine, but the sound, pure doctrine of the word of God. Christian stand for sound doctrine. In Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. And from verse 19 and 20. Go ye therefore... And teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things. If it were not possible, the Lord will not have told us. You know, some people, they say, nobody can stay by all the doctrines of the Bible. They say, what will happen is that this church will specialize in a few of the doctrines. The equa will specialize in a few of the doctrines. The redemption people 
will specialize in a few of the doctrines. The Pentecostal, the assemblies, they will specialize in a few of the doctrines. The Anglicans and the Orthodox churches, they will specialize in a few of the doctrines. And then, a deeper life, they try to specialize in everything. But they say, it's not possible. And thank God, it's possible. Haven't you seen in our meetings, we go from cover to cover. We go through the word of God. The others are specialized in the peak only the doctrines they like. But we take everything. The ones that are sweet and the ones that are bitter. And there are some that are bitter. Oh, we take them. You know, it's so bitter for a natural man. He has this second wife. And this second wife had been with him for 10 years. And they were not fighting. That woman had been cooking for him. Rearing children for him. And uh, the first woman is there. The second woman is there. And he comes and he hears the word. That says a man. Shall leave his father and mother. And cleave unto how many wives? One wife his wife. And they too shall be one flesh. What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. I've heard that, I've seen that, I've believed that, I've preached that. And sometimes, there are some people that find it difficult. It's bitter, but we give it to them. And those who take it, in your mouth it is bitter, in your belly it is sweet. And how do we take it? With prayer and faith in God. Do you know with faith, all things are possible with God? I said, do you know with faith, all things are possible with God? In Lagos here, just some months ago, a man came to me, and this man had been married before, and he had been staying. He had been standing on the word of God because Jesus had teaching them all things whatsoever I have commanded you and lo, I am with you till the end of the world. He came to me and he, and he said, Pastor, as you see me, I married long ago. But my wife ran away from me. And he said, my wife is so terrible that I have pleaded, I have sent people, my people, they have gone to her they have gone to her parents, my brother, and everyone. I've taken my salary, my money. I went to give her, saying, come back. And she said she will never come back. And then she said, Pastor, I cannot stand like this again. So I said, my young brother, you have seen me for the first time. You have just told me. I can pray for you. Oh, he said, Pastor. I don't, uh, I don't know whether it is possible again. Because that woman is very, very difficult. I say, but that's why I'm here. To handle special problems. And to handle the difficult cases of our brothers and sisters. That's what I gave my whole life to. I don't do any other thing again. I just read Bible. I pray. I preach. Read Bible, pray, preach. No other thing. No other thing. And I said, since by the grace of God I'm still here, I will help you. Oh, he began to cry. And then I said, listen to me. Stop the crying. Even if you don't have faith, I have faith. And I have covenant with heaven. I'll pray for you. And then I told him it was in my office in Lagos there. I prayed for him. I said, God, this is my young brother. He's taking this uh, doctrine of the Bible and it looks bitter for him. And he says he cannot stay like this. And he says the woman will never come back. I said, God, send the Holy Ghost after that woman and bring that woman back to him. And then when I finished the prayer, he was so sorrowful he didn't know how to say amen. But I said amen. But do you know, after he left me, he didn't believe that. He went and he was looking for another woman. And he got another woman. 
and went to pay dowry on the second woman after I had prayed for, for him. And all this that I'm talking about to you is it was in the space of about two weeks. And then I, I didn't know that he went to pay the dowry because already the moment I prayed, I knew the work had started. And uh, then he went to look for another woman somewhere and went to pay dowry. Just before he was going to do the final thing, to go to registry and do whatever, because he knew that the church will not do that for him. All of a sudden, not up to two weeks, the wife that I prayed for to come back was searching for him. And uh, so he, the woman came looking for him in Lagos. And then the woman got him. And uh, so the man thought that the woman was coming to fight. So the woman said, you've been coming before to beg me. Why don't you come again? I have now come back. And the man started uh, crying, saying, I don't know, my life is confused. And then he said, watch. And the woman was not of deeper life. The woman said, but you go to deeper life. You've been uh, pleading with me all these years. And I've been rejecting, but now I'm ready. And the man was uh, dragging his feet. So the woman ran to Bagada. The woman had never been to Bagada before and said, I want to see the pastor. And then... Uh, and then the man, the man also came. And then they sat down. I said, you are the one I prayed for uh, just a few weeks ago. He said, yes. And then I said, who is this woman? She said, he said, it's the woman that I pray the Holy Ghost should go and search for and bring her back. So I said, uh, why are both of you in my office now? And the woman began to talk. And the woman said that uh, I don't know what happened to me. That I've been rejecting this man. I have vowed that this man, instead of marrying him again, that I will die. That I will never come back to this man again. But then said, just about two weeks ago, in my house, I just began to think of him. I just began to love him. And then I couldn't stay in my house. I came to Lagos looking for him. And when I got him now, he had been begging me before. He's not ready to take me again. And then I said, young man, see how God answers prayer. And, the, and then the man started crying that he didn't know God can answer prayer like this. And that man said, this deeper life, he will never live this deeper life. Now the God who can answer prayer like this, this is the church where you belong to. Although they tell us that the doctrine is difficult, with prayer and doctrine, nothing is difficult anymore. With faith in Christ, everything is easy in the name of Jesus. What's your problem? How can you come to a place like this and you are running about? People that have been barren for 21 years in this church, we have prayed and God has given them children. The people that have done operation and the doctor said that they can never get child again because of the operation and their husband wanted to drive them away and we said don't drive them, don't drive the wife away. The teaching of the Bible is that you two of you are one, you cannot separate, you cannot be divorced. How are we going to get children? The doctors have removed the vital parts of the body of the woman. We said the creator is the one we are serving. In Lagos here they are carrying children already. Where are you running to, by the way? What are you looking for that you cannot get here? From this place, people have gone straight to heaven. I mean, in this, our church in Lagos here, I've, I've, I've seen people that they have been saved. And it's the way we're preaching to you now that we preach to them. I've seen them, they have been sanctified. I've seen them, they have been baptized in the Holy Ghost. I know a beloved sister in Lagos here, after receiving the word of God, after receiving the experiences of the Bible, and the day she was to go, to go and meet the Lord that we've been talking about, she was just like that in the sitting room, and she was very, very sick and very, very weak. And we were praying that God will restore her and keep, and keep her well. Oh, she said, don't pray like that. She said, look at that mansion. And, and the people there did not see anything. She said, look at the Lord. And look at the mansion. And look at this one. 
look at this one and started and the people there could not see anything and with a smile on her face she said goodbye and went home I mean, there is doctrine that can take a person from out to heaven. What are we looking for again? We, we, have a bro we had a brother in Lagos here. And this brother, he was sick. And the people were going there to pray for him. And then as they, as they came to pray for him, he was sick. But then as they gathered around, and people knew that he was in pain, he was in sickness. And then he said, please don't pray, but begin to sing choruses of heaven. And these people, they gathered around. And one of them started a chorus in my father's house and many mansions. And he was singing and singing and singing that. And then he said, sing another one. I am glad that I'm qualified for heaven. And then another, he said, sing another one. Then they sang another one. And while they were singing, here was his face beaming. He waved to them like this. He was gone. I mean, the doctrines that we preach, the doctrine of the Bible that can take a person from hell to heaven. And before they even died, they were seeing that Lord Jesus Christ. What else are we looking for again? We have got to a resting place. We have got to a place. This is the gate of heaven. And Jacob said, the Lord was here and I did not know it. The Lord is here indeed. I said, the Lord is here indeed. And the Lord Jesus Christ has said, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Then he said, Behold, I am with you till the end of the world. And the people that have not obeyed this teaching of the Bible that we preach, we've also found some of them, a particular person over here in our church, he did not accept a particular thing in the word of God. That you know that God has been helping us to teach and to emphasize. He accepted salvation, accepted sanctification, accepted Holy Ghost baptism, accepted a tithes and offering, accepted all the other things. But on the area of prostitution, he had a little comma, a little question mark. And something happened. He died. And he went up there. And he saw the Lord. And the Lord said, You cannot come yet. Look at this that you didn't accept. You didn't believe. Go back. Go and correct that. Then, when you are ready, we'll invite you to come. And then he came back. Immediately, <laughs> he, began to, he began to tell people that if we reject any of this doctrine, uh, that we will suffer. And he began to tell what he saw. By the grace of God, we have evidence. Cloud of witnesses showing us the peace we have in our heart, the grace of God we have in our lives, the effect of the preaching of the gospel on other people, the way it has transported, translated people from earth to heaven, the miraculous answer to prayer. See, the way we pray, we just pray like this, and in a very single moment, the Lord has answered. Where did you see that before? That we'll just say in one single sentence like this, we just pray like this, and everything is known. We have never seen something like that before. And many, many things that have been happening that the Lord has been doing for us here, and not only, not only in this country, it happens everywhere that the Lord has, uh, you know, that the Lord has been sending me by the grace of God. I was just sharing with um, our region overseers now. By this time last week, I was in Gabon. And by this time next week, by the grace of God, I should be in Benin Republic. And in many of these places, the Lord does wonderful, wonderful things. Some few years in, in Zaire, some years ago, there was this fellow that was, uh, you know, on the stretcher. And he told us later that she had AIDS, incurable disease. And here we were at the crusade field. And at the crusade field, uh, you know, I just finished the message and finished praying for the people. It was about to rain, so the people were uh, to run out of that place of the stadium because it was about to rain. Immediately like this, the people were running well. We just said, in Jesus' name, and just rounded up the prayer. This fellow that had AIDS just rose up and started walking. And they showed it in the national network news of their television. I mean, what else do you want? The doctrine, the teaching, being transported from earth to heaven, 
and the clarity of the word of God, we don't cover anything up. We say it exactly as it is. Don't you know that? We're grateful we're here. What other place can I be in my life? Except at this word of God. The only time I have joy is when I'm reading the Bible. And you know sometimes, it happens many times to me that I'll be so weak physically because either I'm not eating or because there's too much work. And it will be as if I cannot even stand up on my feet for five minutes. I'll be so worn out. And then the choir will sing. I may still feel so weak. And something from my mind will be saying, if another person could preach now, then I will say in my mind, I'll just go there and preach to the people for about 20 minutes. Today, I'll just give them a short message because I'm so weak, I don't even think I can talk. And the moment I touch my Bible, the moment I begin to teach this doctrine, this word of God, there's nothing like it. The strength, the power, the utterance, the gift, everything will just come. What else do you want to do in your life than to just stand by the word of God? You know, as I got to Gabon last week, they got a man came to see me. And before he saw me, they said the man is an old man. And that he's so weak. And he's also a minister. And uh, so I was interested to see this old man that has so preached and worked that he was so old now he couldn't do anything at all. And then he came in, I shook hands with him. And I began to talk to him in his language, that's in French. And uh, when I spoke to him, then after we discussed together, then I said, uh, how old are you, by the way? And he gave me his age, and I'm almost as old as he is. And I don't feel old. I'm as young as a young boy. <laughs> because, because of the power of the word, I eat this word every time. You want to be strong? Eat the word. Eat the word. Eat the word. When you drink in this word, you eat this word of God, you will be strong. And nothing will be able to overcome your life in Jesus' name. You know, some people say, I cannot preach too often because I will lose my voice. Many years in Lagos, I preach five times every Sunday. Three times the following Monday. And three times the following, the following Thursday. I did that for many years. Have I lost my voice? Oh, the word of God. The word of God. That's why we say that you will take your stand with the word of God and nothing will ever make you go back in Jesus' name. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. And I'm reading to you from verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. They continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers you should continue with the word of god steadfastly like they did in the early church and the way god was with them the lord will be with you also in the name of the lord in titus chapter 1 verse 9 titus chapter 1 verse 9 holding fast the faithful word, as he has been taught, that he may, he may be able, by sound doctrine, both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. You will hold fast the word of God as you have been taught. You ought to know your teachers, you ought to know your pastors who have labored over you. Your overseers who have labored over you who have taught you line upon line, precept upon precept. And anywhere you are, in your own house, in your own village, in a town, or you travel out, anywhere you find yourself, you hold 
fast the faithful word that you have been taught. Don't allow anyone to take this word away from you. If, uh, if they come with any other sin, just say simply, that's not the way I've been taught. That's, what, that's not what I've been convinced of in the Bible. Or they say, it's a little sin. Will that little earring uh, make you backslide? I don't want to talk about that. What I know in the word of God is that it is not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Full stop. No discussion after that. How about uh, this famine? What I know is that the way God has made me, I'm okay like that. I will not touch, I will not uh, modify the temple of God. Ye are the temple of God, and the temple of God is only which ye are. Full stop. Not that we'll change this one a little, change that one a little, change that one a little. By the grace of God, we will not add to the word of God. And we will not take away from the word of God. And I've told you already, even when it appears difficult, by the grace of God, the grace of God will make it simple for you. You are even fortunate. When I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, in the school where I was, there was no single Christian born again at a particular time. At the time, there was one. At a particular time, no other born again Christian. I was the only one. And in the school in which we were at that time, my principal will say there was no God. We ridicule Christianity. We ridicule the Bible. And everybody will look my direction. I was alone. But I said, Lord, I will stand. And I came, I went to university. And I came back to teach in that school. And it was like the same story. We'll be in the staff meeting like this. I'll be the only one. And there were times, we'll be marking papers on Saturday because we did it all together. And they will say, everybody should come back on Sunday to mark papers because in that school they didn't know Sunday, they didn't know worship, they didn't know Sunday service, they didn't know anything. All they knew was the academics. And I will be the only one that will say, I will not come tomorrow, I'll be going to church. You say, church? And they'll bring wash us again. But I'll be the only one I will still go. And I will stay throughout the day in the church, morning service, evening service. And there was no church in the town that I was living. I would have to take vehicle every Sunday for many years to go to church. And I did that for more than six, seven years. Just taking vehicle and going to church, going to church and coming back. And when I came back, they would ridicule me that I spent a lot of money, a lot of time, that I was wasting my time because they felt there was no God. But I took my stand. And even though I appeared to be alone there, the Lord stood by me. And when I came to Lagos, 1973, almost eight years, it will be eight years next month. Again, at the University of Lagos, they called me to preach. And I don't know any other thing except come out from among them and touch not the unclean thing. And I preached that in Lagos. Immediately I finished like this. Somebody came from the audience and he took the microphone and said, that is not true. Nobody can live above sin. And began to argue. And yet, it was in that same place, that place of argument, that place of tearing the word of God apart, that we started this deeper life. With 15 people. And all those people, they look at me, they, they will point at me and say, that is the fanatical man. That's the one that's telling them not to use jewelry. That's the one that is saying one man, one wife. That's the one that is talking about restitution. Everywhere I went, they will point at me. The shame, the ridicule, the abuse, the insult. I had no friend. Everybody forsook me. I was a lonely man. But I said, Jesus, you are greater than friends. You are greater than all the other people. 
And the people will be avoiding me. If I try to be in their community, they would, they would, they would uh, you know, push aside. They would not like to sit by me. They said I was fanatical. Some of them were bold enough to come to me directly. And they said, this thing you are preaching will not last. And I said, even if I'm the only one believing the Bible, I'll be like Enoch. I don't care for multitude. I don't care for friends. I don't care for money. I don't care for anything. All I want is Jesus and the Bible. And I said, even if I would like to stand like Enoch, that I will stand. But then I said, the Lord has said he will bless his word. You don't agree, I told them, but I'll keep on preaching the word. And I kept on preaching the word. It's not 20 years or, uh, yet, brothers and sisters. Here we are tonight. In the north, in the south, in the east, in the west, in Africa. In June, I was in Deeper Life Retreat in New York. And we have it in London. And we have it everywhere. Those people told me, they said, we will not be your friend. Look at how many friends I have here tonight. And he said, you will be alone. Am I alone now? And everywhere. When I went to Gabon last week, all those people came around. I looked up to God. And I said, they said I will be alone. But now I even have friends in Gabon. And I have in Ghana. And I have in Bene Republic. I have in down south Zambia. I have in Swaziland. I have in Mozambique. I have those friends there in Liberia. I'm not alone. Am I alone? The word of God has given me eternal life, has given me friends, has given me heaven, has given me health, has given me a wife. I wasn't married then, has given me children, has given me power, has given me gifts. I wasn't known. I came from a little village. It's this word of God that lets you know my name. My name would not have been known but for the word of God. And you know, my commitment and consecration is still that come what may. This word, I will never turn back. When I remember what the Lord has done for me. Then, I tell the Lord, I will never go back. No, 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 no. I will never go back. Rise up and let us pray.
let us stand with the word of God let us stand with the word of God and make up our minds so we will not turn back we will not turn back we will not turn back we will stay with the word of God till the end of our lives We can stand together. We can preach that same truth together. And promise the Lord, promise the Lord, promise the Lord. We'll never turn away from the Lord. We will never turn away from the Lord. We will stand. Whoever may be backsliding, whoever may be going back. Whoever may be denying the sound doctrine we have learned. We're going to stand until the very end. We can stand. We can stand. We can stand on the word of God in these last days. Make up your mind, you will never look back. Make up your mind, you will never look back. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Here we are before the Lord tonight. And we need to make a personal decision before the Lord. That whatever will happen in any situation, that you will stay with this word. I am going to stay with this word. And nothing is going to take us away from the word in Jesus' name.
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the great privilege that we have to be in a church like this. Father, we thank you for the great privilege that we have to have this word of life. Lord, the same question you asked the disciples and you said, will you also go away? Oh God of heaven, here we are tonight and that same question is coming directly unto us. Lord, Peter, on behalf of the others, opened his mouth and he said, To whom shall we go, seeing that you have the word of life? O oh God of heaven, what else are we looking for? What else are we searching for? What else do we need? This word of life is enough. This word of life is sufficient. And we are praying, O oh God of heaven, that you help us to keep to this word of life in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, like Peter of old, we are saying, to whom shall we go? Seeing that you have the word of life. Seeing that here we have the word of life. Lord, we'll remain here. We'll toil there. We'll walk here. And from here we'll go to heaven in Jesus' name. Lord, we have given ourselves to you. We have given our lives to you. We have eaten this word, and it has, it, it has been bitter in our mouth, but now it's sweet in our belly. Lord, we are satisfied with the word. We are praying, O oh God, that nothing, nothing, nothing in this world, Lord, nothing in this world will take us away from this world in Jesus' name. Our God and our Father, this word of life is able, has, has changed us. This word of life has transformed us. This word of life has helped us. This word of life has brought us out of darkness into the marvelous light of God. This word of life has delivered us from the shackles and the bondage of the world and of the sin. Oh Lord, we will not depart from this word. Lord, we pray that this word will remain with us forever in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, when all those false teachers will come, when all those false preachers will come, because they are already in the world, oh God of heaven, when, if, if they meet us alone, or they meet us in group, Father, I pray that we will keep this consecration, we will keep this decision, and nothing will take, them, take us away from you in Jesus' name. Our God and our Father, we pray that this world, this world that has helped people to move to heaven, that has opened the gates and the pearly gates of heaven unto people, O oh Lord, will stay with the world. And we know with this word, we shall behold the face of our Savior. We know this word will keep us until we hear that trumpet sound in Jesus' name. Lord, all these days you have been teaching us. You have been revealing again to us the sound doctrines of the Bible. Father, I'm praying that the Holy Spirit will settle them deep in our hearts in Jesus' name. That every confusion, every doubt will be wiped away in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, we are praying that whether men, whether angels, whether principalities, whether powers that will, may come to want to change us away from this truth, from this doctrine, Father, we pray that it will not work in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, we are not depending on our own power. We are not depending on our own strength. But Lord, our eyes are upon you. Our eyes are upon you. Lord, if you have kept our general superintendent for 29 years, Lord, we believe that that same power will keep us. In this same truth, it will keep us. In this same doctrine, it will keep us. And Father in heaven, we are praying that all the testimonies that they have shared with us and challenge us with tonight. I pray that anywhere we go, Lord, that anyone or anything may try to want to change us. I pray that the Holy Spirit will bring them back to our remembrance and we will refuse to change in Jesus' name. Oh God, this word of life that has transformed a man like this, oh God, we cannot part with it. 
Lord, we will remain with it. We pray, O God of heaven, that you keep us in this way in Jesus' name. And Lord, we are praying that we will not only keep our stand with the word, but that as we go away from here, as we go away from here, that all these doctrines that, we have been, um, that have been revealed to us again, we are going to influence our people. We are going to influence our churches in the villages, in the districts, in every corner of this nation where we have deeper life Bible church. We are going to influence our people to so stand by this word and they will stand in Jesus' name. Lord, on behalf of our people, we are consecrating that we will stand in our own church, in our own location, in our own places, in our house fellowship, and everywhere in the zone, in the district, where we will stand by this word in Jesus' name. Our God and our Father, we are not even going to be satisfied with that. All our neighbors, all our friends, all the people in this nation, even Christians in other denominations that have been confused and been tossed here and there and have been dragged here and there and are confused and are frightened at this period of time. Lord, this word that is strengthening us, this word that is helping us, Father, we'll extend it to them and help them out in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, we just pray that you will strengthen us, that you will energize us, that, Lord, you will quicken us in the inner man in Jesus' name. Lord, we are praying that what we are saying now will not just end here. Father, will be a reality in our various locations in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, when we shall remember today, we'll remember it for joy. We'll remember it with gratitude in our heart that what we told the Lord, we have been able to stand by it. Years may come before the Lord comes, whatever it is, Lord, we pray that our stand, our, our decision today will never change in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, I pray that as we remain standing by this word, as we remain standing on the decision and the consecration that we have made today, O oh God of heaven, we are praying that it will keep us till the coming of the Lord. And when the Lord finally will appear, when the trumpet will sound, and we will rise up to meet the Lord in the air, we will be ever grateful that we were present at this meeting. And the people that we shall influence, as we go back to our various region, our locations, Father, they will ever be grateful that we attended this retreat on their behalf in Jesus' name. Oh God, I'm praying that nobody, nobody will regret and will be condemned in the last days because having had this, having had this, and still went up, Father, I'm praying it will not be the case of any of us in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, we know you're able to keep us. We know by your grace you're able to keep us. And we know that we will stand up till we see you face to face in Jesus' name. Thank you for what you have done for us tonight. Thank you for what you have shown us tonight. Thank you for what you have shared to us tonight. Take all the glory, dear God. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.